The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 3100. The clerk will report the bill. House File number 3100, number three on the calendar for the day, an act relating to retirement, the first engrossment. The member from Ramsey, Representative Her, to your bill. Madam Speaker, uh, thank you so much. Uh, today we are hearing House File 3100. This is the pension omnibus bill. And uh, before I go into just talking a little bit about what this bill does, I want to just say um, a couple of thank yous. Um, I want to first thank the committee members, uh, our senior member, Representative Nelson, uh, Representative Wogama, Representative Chan, Representative Berg. I want to thank the members from the other body, Vice Chair Fronts. Uh, uh, Senator Pappas, Senator Murphy, Senator Seeberger, Senator Nelson, Senator Howe, and Senator Rasmussen. But a really special thank you to our GOP uh, members on the House side here, uh, Representative O'Driscoll and Representative Nadeau. Uh, and I, I want to especially call them out because this is a, a bipartisan, bicameral uh, commission that does really important work. And Representative O'Driscoll, thank you for sharing your knowledge and advice with me. You have been with me every step of the way, sharing all of the information that you have to ensure that you modeled what it meant to have good bipartisan uh, work together and what that looks like, and I appreciate you for that. Representative Nadeau, you are amazingly curious. You show up ready to do the work. Pensions is really technical, and it's not the fun work that we get to do here, fighting for certain values or things we think we're fighting for Minnesotans for, but you dug in and you looked at all the technical pieces of it and asked really thoughtful questions every commission hearing. And I wanna thank you for that because your engagement gave me the motivation to keep doing the best job that I possibly could. So thank you both so much. And I, I couldn't um, finish saying thank you. And I'm gonna say, actually, I'm gonna also say thank you to staff and I'm gonna leave somebody very special to the end. Thank you to our nonpartisan staff, Susan Lencheski and Lisa De uh, Deslin. They made me look so good. Uh, it look, everyone said to me I had a great run pension uh, commission. The truth is, is they were the ones who made our pensions commission run really well. Um, also to our partisan staff, John Beeler, my CA, Nick Stumalanger, who I could not have done this without him. He is just a wealth of knowledge. I was like, Nick, how long have you studied pensions and finance? And he said, just when I started working with you. And so someone who can pick up that expertise in that short time is just invaluable. Thank you, Nick. And then also Senate staff, Ryan Majerus, who just was you know, with us, continually ensuring that the Senate was in lockstep. But I also wanna just say thank you to Speaker Hortman. Uh, your belief in my vision, I could never have imagined that uh, that buy-in would be so quick. That when I came to you and said, I, won't, I don't want to be chair unless we do certain, these certain things, and you didn't even hesitate to say yes. And for all of you who uh, may not know this story, when Speaker Hortman asked me to chair pensions, I had said, well, I will only do it if we consider these specific things. I said I needed a CA, and she gave me a great CA. Um, I said I needed people to be appointed to the commission early so that we can meet uh, regularly. We needed regularly dedicated time, which we got 8.30 in the morning on Mondays. So exciting. And also that um, we needed a big target because there was a lot of important work to do. And the speaker said, absolutely. And that without her leadership and her vision of what this commission could do, we would not have been able to put the pension plan that we had, uh, the pension omnibus bill that we did um, that is in front of all of you today. So thank you, Speaker Hortman, for believing in that vision and letting us do this work. Um, what is in this bill? So when I said that we got the biggest investment uh, we've ever received in pensions, that is, though it's one-time investment in our state pensions, uh, it is the biggest, and that was $600 million. And with that $600 million, we were able to uh, put money into um, COLA increases, $71 million in, uh, for our coordinated members, 17 million for COLAs for basic members, and then we also uh, were able to put uh, benefits in for our active members, 34 million for buying down uh, employee contributions and plans, 8 million for buy down for St. Paul teachers and the modified rule of 90. We have benefits um, for the plan as a whole, 345 million in direct state aid uh, to, uh, full, to fund the plans. This improves Minnesotans' interaction with benefits from their retirement programs and allows us to ensure that their plans remain healthy and strong. We did a lot of really great work in this and we allocated money more than we ever have for certain groups. We created, Senator Rasmussen came to me with a wonderful plan about how we were going to encourage uh, independent small firefighter uh, groups uh, to join the larger plans because one, they were overfunded and they weren't, and they didn't know how to manage these plans in a way. It's not that they didn't know, I would say they all worked really hard, but it's that when you're a smaller plan, you can't build on um, uh, the, uh, 
ensuring that everybody has the best, uh, maximize their benefits. And this, and the plan that we put together, five million dollars of that, will go into allowing the smallest firefighter plans in order to be a part of the larger ones to get better benefits. And so there is a lot of really great work in this plan. There uh, is a lot of bipartisan support. This bill passed out unanimously from uh, the Pension Commission with support from both senators and uh, um, re representatives and those who are uh, Republicans or Democrats. The pieces that we, that we uh, had agreements on were all in this bill. And so with that, uh, Madam Speaker, um, I would just ask that our body um, vote for this bill. And we have other speakers here today that would like to speak to it. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House Hall number 3100. Third reading. Discussion to the bill. The member from Dakota, Representative Berg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. With my nearly two decades in the labor movement, it should come as no surprise that working families are my passion. From ensuring worker safety on the job site to fighting for a livable wage and the right to collectively bargain and fiercely protecting what our workers have earned through their life's work. And that's really why I've wanted to serve on the Pension Commission for two terms. Not because I understand in depth the policy, I'm so glad the chair her does, but because our workers deserve to have everything they earned over a lifetime of hard work protected and ready for them when they finally leave the workforce. I want to thank Chair Her for her incredible leadership and patience for all the questions I asked behind the scenes. Thank you for centering our workers in every discussion and every decision made. Thank you to everyone at our side of the table, Representative O'Driscoll and Representative Nelson's wealth of knowledge and experience helped put the pieces together of a very complicated puzzle. I also want to thank, I suppose, the members of the other body that helped craft what I think is an incredible bill for our workers. So I just want to thank everyone that was a part of crafting this bill. It wasn't easy. We didn't make everyone happy. But under Chair Her's incredible leadership, we have a bill that we can all be proud of. Thank you. The member from Stearns, Representative O'Driscoll. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Um, I have served on the Pension Commission ever since I've um, come to the legislature. And my story is um, I've been a pension geek since I was in high school. Uh, my parents are both involved in public employment and were involved in this thing called PERA. Uh, my dad was in police and fire. My mom was in the PERA general plan. And I became kind of intrigued by what, what are those plans? How do they work? And, and I was questioning my parents. And they said, oh, we get this literature in the mail about every quarter, we're going to give it to you. You read it, you tell us what this is all about. And so I've always had an affinity for what I consider doing the right thing when it comes to uh, public pensions. And we don't always have a smooth, smooth road ahead of us when it comes to these kinds of things. We also know that we're dealing with people in their retirements as we're moving forward. And I've enjoyed working with you, Chair Her, um, and I appreciate your um, open door policy and, and um, allowing me to share some of my experiences and the wisdom that I have, um, as well as some of the things to avoid and the pitfalls of, of how to do this job. And you've been very open to that. And so I appreciate that. Um, the other part of this is we are being able to buy down unfunded liabilities and pensions in the state of Minnesota. And we're going to go from 75 to 7% as our anticipated return. And if you're still tuned in with me after that wonky little you know, finance part of this, that's extremely important to the state of Minnesota. It helps us to ensure that when the state of Minnesota goes and does business, and the folks from MMB go out to New York and they talk about selling bonds, that Minnesota stands head and shoulders above other states with financial and fiscal responsibility. A AAA credit rating is something that I have worked very hard on pensions to preserve, and we continue to enjoy that. And with this bill, if we uh, pass it here today and the governor signs it, we'll continue on that path for um, meeting our obligations for folks here in the state of Minnesota who are involved in our public pensions, and it will also help preserve the credit rating here in the state of Minnesota, both of which are important to me. Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, and members, I recommend a yes vote this afternoon on House File 3100. Any further discussion? The member from Ramsey, Representative Herr. 
Madam Speaker, I would just uh, echo our Representative O'Driscoll's point is that this is a really good bill. And um, I do ask for everyone's green vote on this. And also to just state, as uh, Representative Berg did, that you know we did get the largest target ever. But we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do. And we want our teachers to know we hear you, we've heard you, that we will continue to look for ways in which we can better the pension plans. We've heard from our firefighters, from our police officers, from those in corrections. We've heard from those who are on basic plans, those who uh, no longer you know, have very basic benefits. We heard from all of you and that we continue to want to do right by everyone because we know that the work that you did for our state, what you sacrificed to take less pay in order to have a pension when you retired, that that all matters to us. And so I am committed and continue to be committed, and I know this body is as well, for us to honor all of your voices and to continue this work even after we've passed this bill today. So thank you, Madam Speaker, and I ask for a green vote. The clerk will take the roll on the bill. The clerk will close the roll. Engen votes aye. There being 120 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.